Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever I have it to be. Hello, friends and associates. Uh, this is Dr. Mohammed Nizami uh, with another video on RF and microwave device uh, design and modeling. Um, uh, today, I'm going to cover a little piece of the uh, introducing um, uh, surface integrated waveguide uh, components. So in order to do that, such as filters, um, we, we, well, in order to do that, we're going to get, uh, and, and also there is a radial combiner that I will do using SIW uh, technology in the coming up uh, series on, on, on um, radial um, power combiners and splitters. Yeah. But today I'm going to cover just the basics of the uh, surface integrated waveguide. Um, I'm a, an independent contractor right now, uh, open for contracting, uh, design contract opportunities. I, I operate outside, outside the U.S. I have about 30 years of experience out of microwaves back in the U.S. I live abroad and um, I operate very inexpensively. Uh, so if there is anybody, small company, uh, small consulting firm with design opportunities, I I, I do remote uh, design uh, work. Um, you give me the specifications or the previous generation of your product or component and I will uh, do my own simulations. I will do my own design, I will, um, make up documentations, uh, review it with your engineers, um, using remote tools such as Zoom and Teamwork, uh, MS Team, and then turn into um, to you a bill of materials, schematics, BC board, uh, Gerber file, whatever, uh, in addition to the modeling using uh, either ADS, if it's active, um, if it is passive components, uh, front end of devices for antennas, I can do it with HFSS usually, uh, and, or any other packages. Schematics, I can do in Cadence and in Altium. Okay, so let's go into the um, today's topic, which I'm gonna talk about, introduce a little bit uh, on substrate integrated waveguide usage. Uh, now, I'm not gonna cover very thoroughly the basics of it, because I assume that uh, you guys know this or designers know this. So I'm just going to introduce a little piece that introduces the the next video, which is the uh, components using SIWs. Okay. So just briefly, <clears throat> what is a, a, a surface integrated waveguide? Well, as you know, waveguides are 3D devices, so they have heights, they have width, they, are, they have weights. And they can't be integrated. You might have seen my previous videos on the uh, transition uh, from waveguides to uh, planar uh, transmission lines. Uh, they're complex and they introduce loss and they're not integratable, as you know. Um, or they're integratable, but they, they still preoccupy weight and size. So people came, looked at this and said, well, why don't we come up with a way to do to design a transmission line, which is in this case in here, okay. This is a piece of copper, both sides, uh, with a bunch of vias, okay, placed at a certain distance with certain radius, and and this, believe it or not, does act as a waveguide. It has a, exactly the same trans electrical characteristics like a waveguide. It, it, it's integratable. So it's, it's, it's printed. And at certain frequencies, if it's designed correctly, it can have much lower loss than typical micro strip lines and strip lines. The only thing you have to do, there are some principles for the design and I'm not gonna go through those. You can yourself refer back to, I will show you one publication that shows the, the derivations of these parameters, design parameters, and namely they are basically the A, Okay, and there is no B in this case, of course, because this is not unlike waveguide, unless if you consider the height of the substrate really as, as your B. And there's a diameter of the hole, and then the, uh, the, the, the center to center of the Vs, okay? So you design this for the particular frequency band you're interested in, 
And what happens is this actually will have just like a, a waveguide, it will have a cutoff frequency. And that cutoff frequency is dictated by the distances between these vias because these vias right now, they look like electrical wall at some frequencies where the wavelength is, is long enough that it will not pass through these, okay, these vias. But as soon as they start leaking out, this is not any more wavelength. So the distance is usually assumed to be uh, one fifth of the wave uh, length in the uh, substrate. The uh, P parameters, the, the placement from center to center is assumed to be twice the uh, diameter. Uh, and this is, of course, this is always constrained by the manufacturing technology or the BCB house. This is a drill. You have to drill here, you have to drill here. So the, the, there's, a, there's a limitation on how close you can place these. Okay, so if you look at this line, usually it's a much wider line than a microstrip line. So therefore always there's losses, uh, much less losses because there's more copper to pass the signal, okay? And uh, so before we do that, let me show you one publication where you can actually um, <clears throat> get some technical background on this technology. And this, I just happened to grab one of these papers. This is a recent paper. Uh, this is uh, 2022, this year, back in April. And it does review these. It shows you the equivalency between waveguide and between SIWs. It shows you the design, it shows you the parameters, and then it derives the equations for all of these things, the cutoff frequency for the... And uh, in here, of course, uh, let me get back. Uh, we need to feed this on both sides using microstrip usually, okay? So one of the issues that we have to deal with is designing a transition, okay? That will take us from a 50 ohm uh, microstrip line onto the... SIW. And the transition in here, it happens to be a, a typical design, which is a, a transformer, impedance transformer from 50 ohm to a low impedance value, usually anywhere between one to 30 ohms, okay, depending on the width of this here. So here's an equation. I got it from one of the uh, sources, okay, so we're assuming that the impedance in here is Z2, and the impedance in here, of course, is 50 ohm, okay? So, I don't know why in this case it says 60 ohms. That's that's wrong, but anyway, let's go further. So here's the impedance. It's a function of the uh, width two, which is this width in here. That's width two in here, even though it's a mistake, it's not labeled. Uh, okay, and the height, okay, and a bunch of, constants and this assumes that the the width in here ratio to the height is much much greater than one so uh, schematically this is basically you got a 50 ohm line which is this line and you want to transfer it to siw with an impedance much lower because it's much wider line and so you put a table uh between the 50 ohm and this the siw and that uh, basically transforms the impedance with minimum reflections. Um, now, there are some techniques where they use multiples of quarter wavelength transformers uh, using the Klopstein, um, but there is no really need unless you really uh, have a certain situation where uh, you, you just can't cope with uh, these things. But this is sufficient in most cases. And the BC board will look like this. This is a back-to-back. -back. This is just a, this is the SIW uh, waveguide, and this is the microstrip to uh, SIW on both sides. Okay. So <clears throat> now today we're going to present little pieces of of demos on HFSS that will introduce the concept of using uh, building the designing devices using SIW. Uh, technology. Now, the first one is, this is a waveguide, okay, a slice of a waveguide. This is half of the waveguide, but there's two pieces they, they um, screw together and make up a filter. And this filter, this is well-known filter too. You probably have seen this. And um, 
the same thing that you any any device that you can think of in waveguide you can do in SIW, and that's what basically a lot of researchers went online and went and 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 researched and designed a lot of these. So this is just showing you that you can take SIW and you can place vias at a certain distance according to the um, filter coefficients that you, that using Chebyshev or any other. Topology, and you can actually build a bandpass filter just like you would do on a waveguide because these vias, when they're placed perpendicularly, they're basically really electrical walls, metal. Okay, so this is equivalent to this. And we, uh, I'm gonna go through some illustration of this in ANSYS and in um, SIW. Now, here's another example showing a waveguide with posts. That's another technique of, may, of doing a bandpass filter. And this is showing exactly how you would do it also in uh, SIW technology, okay? Here's another filter where the uh, ridges are on one side only, and you can do exactly the same thing, okay? So just a little commercial, and let's go and start let's go to the uh, hfss so what i have here i have a substrate with a bunch of vias that are placed so we've got the uh we've got a a, a piece of copper on one side and then uh one on the other side okay and then we've got a bunch of vias placed uniformly uh, like this, and what we have right now, this is a duroid right now, uh, this this substrate. So, and then there are two sheets on both sides feeding the waves to this here. So we're going to excite this, we're going to analyze this at a, uh, and then just show what we have. So this is what we have right now, as you can see. So basically, the, this is the S21. This is the insertion loss. And you can see that it's really like a waveguide that is mismatched because of the ripple in here. And the return loss is, is here. And the reason why is this is because the impedance of this, the, the input and output impedances are not really 50 ohm for the line. And I'm feeding them with a 50 ohm standard and therefore there is a mismatch. And that's what you get. And, and in fact, you could go in and plot your impedance and you can see that, for instance, at this frequency, it's only 17 ohm, okay? So now what we're gonna do next, uh, okay, let's look at the E field of how the wave propagates through this. And this is basically, as you can see, what I did, I did a solution, the the analysis at three different frequencies, I believe. I did it at five gig, 25 gig, and 40 gig, so that we can actually see in the cutoff, below the cutoff, and somewhere around uh, throughout this period in here. So let's look back at this now, and let's animate it and see at different frequencies um, how it behaves. Okay, so here is this, okay? And what we have right now is you can see the waves are being fed in here and the vias are actually, as you can see at the beginning, way at the beginning, okay? The, the, the wave leaks through here and here, okay? But as soon as it gets in, and this is, happens to be a frequency that is, uh, that is above the cutoff, you can see that the, this, these vias are acting as a wall. And it's exactly behaving like a waveguide, except the, the, the height of the waveguide is really the height of the substrate. So it's a very low profile integrable device. So let's see. Now this one, I believe, well, let's see what frequency this is at. So this right now it's at 40 gigahertz. Now let's see at other frequencies. Let's see at uh, 
five gig, how it behaves. And there you go. So you can see that it's feeding the signal, but the signal is not really passable to this because it doesn't pass. It just sees high impedance. And if we go in the middle somewhere and we can see that here is the um, E field behavior. Okay, so this is the SIW, okay, in principle. So basically, just to review this, we've got basically, we've got a, 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 a piece of copper, okay, on top and bottom, okay, and then we place Vs onto them. So, uh, and, and this acts similar to a waveguide. So now let's go and see what we can do about this here, the transition, because we obviously we can't uh, use this the, with the uh, frequency response that we have here, which is, uh, let's just show that again. You can see that the impedance in here is mismatched. So we, we need a transition that, that transforms 50 ohm to the um to the um to the SIW impedance which is usually low so and and one of the ways like I mentioned before we have a um uh, uh, a width here and then a width here which is corresponds to the 50 ohm and what we do is we want to um basically transform the impedance from 50 ohm onto this here so we have an equation, which um, in this case, let me just correct this before I forget. This is this is two. This should say two here. Oh, okay. So we have width two, which is this width, and we have this length in here, and we have the width in here, which is W zero. That's corresponds to fifty ohm. So now the 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 uh, the uh, the um, the trick is how do we uh, how do we transform this so now let's go ahead and see how we can transform this from 50 ohm to this using uh, using this equation so basically we we need to uh, the impedance in here as a function of this width, and so you can actually, there are a couple of ways to do this. You can parameterize it and just give a little guess at the beginning uh, into uh, the modeling tool like uh, HFSS, or you can actually go to these papers that I showed you and program the equations in the MATLAB and, and get it done that way. So let's get back to HFSS and I built a little thing in here where we have basically a, a microstrip line, okay? And we have a transformer, okay? That basically transforms this impedance from 50 ohm to this width, okay? So that's basically like this. And, and in this case, I fit it with a, um, a wave pool uh, that is attached to the sides, okay? So we have this port and this port being fed. And so ran this previously, and this is, uh, let's look at the S parameters first. This is the frequency response now. As you can see, it's much better now. And uh, you can see that it, uh, the, uh, even though the other side is really still not matched, we're looking at just one side, okay? So you can see that um, the loss and the return loss is done. Now, to view the impedance um, of this, so you can see right here that on one side, we are close to 50 ohm, okay, 48.2. And on the other side, we're only 32 ohms, okay? So, and that is basically because we need another transformer on the other side. So now, of course, that that is easily uh, done with uh, the HFSS tool. So all you have to do now is just basically uh, 
go in here and just copy this and rotate it to the other side, 180 degrees, duplicate the, the whole thing with a little bit of, 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 of line length for the SIW and the uh, SIW in here. So now let's uh, let's look at the uh, that is done. So this is basically uh, we've done it this way. So this is basically a, 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 two, a three suction device where we come in here, fifty ohm micro strip line and fifty ohm micro strip line, and what we end up with here are the VAs. Okay. So the VAs are here. Here's the top and bottom. Okay. The bottom basically is all solid, ground plane. Okay. And the top is basically this piece here, which is SIW. And, and in this case, I I unified the copper. I usually you draw this here as um as one piece, and you draw this another piece. And this basically you just copy this and rotate it. So this is look at the frequency response of this. And here we go. So and uh, you can see that now, of course, it is exactly a waveguide. Uh, now, never mind this shoot up a little bit in here. That's because of the computation from uh, the the modeling tool. But as uh, as you can see here, this here represents exactly what you usually get from a waveguide. Okay. And the return loss, you can see that just like you would get from a waveguide, that it, it after a while it becomes the uh, reflection coefficient becomes um, steady and the same. And then you can see that the impedance, of course, is 50 ohm, perfect 50 ohm. In this case, 51 ohm. Uh, good enough. So let's uh, look at the E field on this. Now we've got it on both sides, so let's look at it on top. Okay, and uh, again, this was generated probably for the same frequencies that we did before. So let's animate and see how it works. So now you can see that the signals, um, basically electrical wall in here where the Vs are, Okay, and it acts exactly like a waveguide. Now there is a little leakage in front of here. And so that can be uh, solved by doing a, co a little copper core, as we will show in the future videos, uh, and then stitch VS to it so that you can actually narrow this so that it, it doesn't do this, okay? So again, um, you can see, you can modify this so that you can run it at the frequencies below cutoff. And, and you can see here it is, okay? So, so that's what we have. So now, the, as you can see, the, the wave cannot penetrate to the other side where, um, let's go back to one of the frequencies that is within the, Pass band within the uh, post past the cutoff. This is a lower frequency, and you can see that it's exactly a waveguide. So what well, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna build on this and go and explore designing filters at KA band, KU band, and C band. Okay, to uh, for various communication uh, devices. Okay, well here you have it, gentlemen. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Mohammed Nizami wishing you the best.